Hi guys. All right, thank you everyone for joining today. So we're gonna be talking about how to get started with video marketing. Now, my expectation for you guys and what I hope you leave with today is the confidence to develop your own unique plan of action around video marketing for your business because there's not a one size fits all solution. A little bit about me. I am Nicole Pereno, creative director here at AIM, the Association of Independent Mortgage Experts. My background is in video production and I've been in the mortgage marketing space now for the past two and a half years. All right, let's jump right into it. Now, my first slide is very intentional here. I have video content first before anything else because I truly believe this is the most important thing to think about. Before you focus on what type of camera you're gonna get, what kind of microphone, a nice set, you really should focus on what kinds of videos you're going to make. So this has happened to me, it's happened to a lot of people. We invest in some fancy equipment and it just sits there and collects dust and we never use it. Um, it can maybe feel overwhelming to even turn it on and get started with it. So we don't want that to happen to you guys. So before you invest in any type of equipment, make sure you have a plan of action. Set some goals. What do you want to achieve with this video equipment? Uh, what are, why are you making videos? Who are you making them for? And for what purpose? So here's some things you can think about to kind of get your ideas flowing. Who is your audience? Very, very important. Who are you making these videos for? Is it real estate agent referral partners? Is it borrowers and past clients? Uh, is it specifically first time home buyers or maybe veterans? Now, what problems are they facing in their day to day? Now in this market, I'm sure they are looking for a lower interest rate. A lot of people, maybe first time home buyers need to consolidate some debt or are they just confused about the home buying process in general? Um, another thing to think about is frequently asked questions that you get from clients. This, right, this alone is a ton of content topics and ideas for you. So think about those. What are the answers? Write that down. With agent partners, maybe they're having trouble getting listings or they don't know how to do their own marketing. Okay. Now the last piece is how will you provide the solutions and be of support to them? Is it maybe a technology offering? Are you wanting to co-market with an agent partner? Or are you just being that true trusted advisor for future homeowners? So once you think about all these things, write it down, journal it, sketch it out, just get all the ideas out of your head and onto a paper or into your computer. Now, once you have all of those ideas sort of out in post-it notes or in your computer, we can refine it a little bit. So let's think about what are you actually going to say in your videos? You have the overarching, you know, topic, you have the content idea, but let's drill down on what exactly you're going to say before we even turn the camera on or set the lighting up. Uh, now I want to mention, I'm going to go over a lot of products that I use and some videos, some other videos that you can watch. I will put all the links in the description of the YouTube video after this webinar is over. So one video you can check out, it's how to write a basic script for any video idea that you have. It's on the AIM National YouTube channel, how to videos playlist. There's four prompts that you can answer. Why am I making this video? Who is going to watch this video? What information am I telling them? That's an important one. And what action do I want them to take after watching this video? That's another super important thing. You don't want the video to just look nice and sound nice, but you actually want to get something out of it, right? That's the whole point. You want to get a new lead. You want to convert a lead. You want to make a sale. You want to do something with the video. So once you answer those four prompts, you can just put it into this basic, you know, little blurb. So hello, real estate agent, 
uh, referral partners. And you can probably say their actual name. <laughs> so hello, David, who's my real estate agent partner. I want to tell you today about what's going on in the market and why so many people are wanting to refinance because market, the market is so crazy and rates are so low. Go into more detail. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you have any more questions, my name is Nicole from AIM and please send me an email for further information. I'd love to connect with you. And that's it. Basic, simple script. Now, once you have a bunch of these little blurbs written out for all the different content topics you want to cover, you can use something like a big view app. A lot of people use this I've seen with success. You take the script that you've written, you put it into this app and it will turn your phone into a teleprompter. So it's pretty fancy. Like you're on the five o'clock news or something. Uh, you record a selfie video and the text is scrolling, you're reading and boom, you're done in one take. You don't need to worry about editing. You don't need to worry about redoing it. You're just reading from the script. Another good tool is MBS Highway. Inside MBS Highway, there's something called Social Studio and that does the exact same thing on your desktop. So log into your MBS Highway account, go into the Social Studio. They even have pre-written video scripts. So all the kind of market updates that you rely on with MBS Highway, um, they basically turn them into video scripts for you to use. Now you can go and edit and tweak it a little bit if you want, make it sound a little bit more like you. If you're good to go, just press record and your computer screen will turn into a teleprompter. And then same thing, you're just reading, looking into the camera and no one would ever know. You're done in one take and you can post that video. All right, now that we've covered the content and like I said, that's the most important thing to think about first. Once we have that plan of action in place, now we can start to focus on the equipment. And the reason I put that first too is uh, a lot of people ask me, oh, what kind of camera should I buy? What kind of microphone? And I can't answer right away because it really depends on what kinds of videos you're going to be making and where you're going to be making them. So there's some things to think about that will really help inform your decision on what kind of equipment to buy. The location is first. So think about where you're going to be filming these videos mostly. Is it gonna be at your desk, in your office, a stationary position? Are you gonna be walking around? I see a lot of people doing videos outside, walking around their neighborhood, at a park. Um, are you gonna be walking around touring for open houses? Or are you gonna maybe invest a little bit more time and energy into creating like a home studio that's you know stationary, a little bit more built out. It's kind of like you turn the camera on, everything's set and ready to go. Once you know uh, which location you're gonna be shooting at most, then you can start to think about the types of camera. Now, we have a cell phone. This, I tell everyone, please just start off by using your cell phone. You don't need to worry about all this other fancy stuff. Just get in the habit of even recording videos with something. So if you have a cell phone that you bought in the past like two or three years, it's perfectly adequate, trust me. With, with proper lighting um, and a good you know, background, your video is gonna turn out really great. No one's gonna ever know you shot it on a cell phone. Actually, a lot of videos you've probably seen me do, I have shot on a cell phone. Now, right now I'm using my nice professional camera, but a tons of times I will just have a quick idea and maybe the speed of getting the video out is more important than you know, having this whole setup with the high quality. I'll just get out my cell phone, put it on a tripod, boom. Uh, it works really simple. So I would suggest starting with that first. A lot of people use something like a Logitech webcam. This is full HD quality. So it's going to be way better than just the camera that's inside your uh, laptop. So if you're using something, you're using like a MacBook Pro or a laptop, it might have a built-in webcam. That's not going to work. So bare minimum, I'd say for that, invest in the webcam, a couple hundred bucks for the Logitech webcam works really great. Um, good autofocus on your face and it just give you that touch of higher quality. Now, if you are looking to go the most elaborate route here, you can use the, the DSLR. 
Now this is the this is what you see here in on the side the Canon EOS 90D. Um, with this, you have a lot of optionality. You can get very specific as to what style of video you want to get out of this. However, the downside is there's a higher learning curve. So this is not a camera you just take out of the box and boom, it's ready to go. You got to learn a little bit about it. You got to figure out which buttons do what. Uh, so it takes, you know, it takes time and energy. So if that's something you're willing to invest, go for it. This would be a good option. Uh, the other thing to mention here is you can change the lenses. So um, you get one camera, but multiple lenses on the front. And some of them might be very zoomed in. Some of them might be wider. Uh, and there's a whole range in the middle. So you can get, like I said, very specific with the style of shot you're going to get. Next, almost more important than the video, I would say, is the audio. So you can see right here, I'm using a little uh, lavalier lapel mic. I say it's almost more important than the video because you may have seen videos before where the audio quality wasn't really good. And I can guarantee you, you tuned out right away. Your video might look beautiful, but if no one can hear you, it's definitely not going to do well. <laughs> Um, and then even if you have bad audio quality, maybe there's a hiss or, you know, maybe it's all mumbled and, and jumbled. That's going to be very distracting for people and more likely that they tune out of your video. Now, again, consider a couple things before you think about which type of microphone is best for you. It's not going to be a one size fits all solution. Uh, I always ask people, you know, well, they're like, what kind of mic should I buy? And I ask them, well, what kind of videos are you making with what camera? Where's your location? Like all of that um, comes into play. So like I said, lavalier, I'm using it right here. This is really good for mobility. You, I could be moving all around. Uh, the wire is really long that plugs into my computer um, or it plugs into my phone. So I use it for both. And yeah, I can move around and no matter where I go, the microphone itself is still on my body. So it's still going to get that good quality sound. Another option, and a lot of people use these, is the Blue Yeti. It's the silver one over there. A lot of people use these. It's a computer microphone. It plugs in via USB. This is perfect for if you're just going to be recording video at your computer, at your desk, stationary. Maybe you're doing a lot of screen shares. That's a good mic. Plugs right in. You do have to be closer to it. Um, but like I said, if you're sitting at your desk, that's going to work great. And then again, with our pro quality, if you're going to use the DSLR, the professional camera, you can go with something like a shotgun microphone. Uh, I've also done some videos uh, with shotgun microphones like that, that, like a mini one that plugs into the phone. So there's lots of options here. Um, now with the shotgun, it's directional. So it's going to pick up everything directly in front of it. That's the, that's where it's going to pick up the sound from. So as long as you have it mounted on top of the camera and you're a decent, you know, a decent amount close to the camera. Perfect. It's going to pick you up right there. So, and that's also a good option. You know, you can, you can have your hands moving all over and there's no wires. So, cause it's just mounted right on top of the camera. So, Lots of options here. Now, the third thing, oh, I'm so sorry, I skipped a slide. <laughs> the third thing to think about is the lighting. I wanna mention first, sunlight is free. I tell everyone this, they ask me, what kind of light should I buy? Um, and I just say, hey, why don't you start off, again, get your feet wet. Before you go buy the elaborate, fancy equipment, and then it sits in the corner and collects dust in your house. Let's not do that. Let's first get our feet wet. So use your cell phone, maybe buy, this is a $50 microphone. And like I said, I'll put the links in the description of the YouTube video. Get you know a $50 microphone, use your cell phone and face towards a window. I'm looking behind me because there's a window. Um, that's gonna be perfect lighting on your face, very soft and even flattering, and it doesn't cost anything. One thing to note, if you do go outside, if you're shooting outside and you're thinking, oh, I'm in direct sunlight, so this is gonna look good. Be careful about shadows. 
So if you are walking around the neighborhood or you're in a park somewhere, uh, you want to try to go under a tree or somewhere where it's shaded because you're still, the sun is very powerful. You're still going to get a ton of light on your face, but you don't want to get those dark circles under your eyes uh, or have like harsh shadows across your face. Now, if you do want to invest in some lighting equipment, maybe you're, maybe you're making a little studio at home where you want to have the camera on the tripod and lights ready to go that you can just turn on and hit, and hit record and go. LED lights, simple, easy, battery operated, um, five or six feet tall light stands. You can move them all around. You don't have to plug it into the wall. Um, and then obviously ring lights. Everyone knows ring lights nowadays. The good thing about a ring light is it comes, they both come with, you know, stands or a tripod, but the ring light will usually have a holder in the center for your phone or your professional camera. So that's really good. If you use the rectangular LED panel light, um, you'll have to get another tripod next to it for the camera itself. One thing I also want to mention with, if you're, if you are purchasing LED lights, make sure that the color temperature can be adjusted on them. That comes in handy a lot of times for me. Uh, this will make, this will make the light go from orangey color to like a more white bluish um, hue. And that's good for, you know, there's other light around you that's affecting the shot and maybe you just your skin tone. You want to get it to look exactly how you want it. So that's a good thing to have when purchasing lights. Okay. So that's, that's all of the equipment um, that you have to think about. Now, maybe you're going to record just at your desktop. So you don't necessarily need the whole studio set up with the camera and the lights. Um, and you're doing a lot of screen sharing or I'm sure everyone has used bomb bomb. This, I would, this what I would say is like the most basic way to just start doing video and sending it out. This is a good place to start. Something I like besides bomb bomb is loom and soapbox. And both of these, uh, have tutorial videos on aim national YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the description of the YouTube, uh, this YouTube video. Loom, I love because you can edit the videos, trim them, and actually remove parts from the middle after you're done recording before you send it out via email or download the video. And I also love when the mouse uh, gets highlighted. Every time you click, there's a little highlight on the mouse. That's super helpful, especially if you're going through like long documents uh, sharing with borrowers. Then with Soapbox, I also love this. It's just another style um, of, you know, recording your webcam. Loom will have your face in the circle. You can move it around. With Soapbox, your webcam will be the whole side of the screen. And then the other portion of the screen will be whatever you're sharing. Now, the thing I love about Soapbox is after you're done recording it, you can actually choose which of those things appears full screen at which moment. So maybe you're introducing people uh, to what you're going to talk about and you want your webcam to go full screen. But then as you get into the details of the document or whatever you're sharing on your screen, you want that to go full screen. You can choose at the time code when that happens before you download the video or before you share it via email. Now, the most important thing that I always tell people to is thumbnails. Before you just download this video and share it out, be careful. Do not trust the auto-generated thumbnails of videos. I personally have gotten into trouble with this many times. I will just go to post a video and then, you know, it populates on people's feeds and the thumbnail is ridiculous. Maybe my face is looking so silly or, you know, another person is looking silly in the video. You don't want to trust that, please. So within Facebook, uh, especially if you're using a Facebook business page, you can actually go into edit the video and you can choose from like eight to 10 auto generated thumbnails. But you know, out of all of them, one is probably one or two are probably nice. So make sure you do that before posting. The best option here would be just create your own custom thumbnail. It's super simple. You don't need to be a Photoshop expert or anything like that. You can do this from your phone if you really want. I use Canva for a really quick, you know, easy thumbnail option. Um, I've even, a couple AIM members have told me they use 
uh, something to remove the background, like it'll cut the person out and then you can put it on top of another image, which is pretty cool. Again, I have a tutorial on this on the AIM National YouTube channel, so I'll put the link in the description. Uh, here you can see some examples of thumbnails. It's good to have the text on the thumbnail because yes, the, the title of the video is down there, but this thumbnail is really going to be capture people's attention and make them want to click on the video. So you want to give them a little idea of what they're going to be watching and then some text to help them along too. Their thumbnails are also very important if you're sending video via email. I know with BombBomb and some of those other platforms, they'll even let you have a little animated GIF that kind of like plays back and forth uh, in the body of the email for people. If you can customize this, that's even better. Uh, some people will put like the play button on top of it so that it's more, you know, it's enticing people to actually click and watch the video in your email. Okay, so that's if you're just recording and sending right away. But what if you're recording with a professional camera or your cell phone in a different location away from your desk and now you have to ingest the footage, take it out of the camera, put it in the computer, do something with it um, to get it to be posted. So the first option, and I would suggest this one the most, is get the footage, just post it right away. Just post it, get it over with. The worst thing that's gonna happen to you is no one engages with your video, okay? Now, that's not the end of the world. You can just let it be, go back, practice again, keep trying, keep practicing, keep doing it. Like get your feet wet, just, just start to do it. Um, and the best case scenario is maybe people do engage with this video, maybe they do like it because they see that you are just trying. So maybe they like you, they support you already and they're gonna give you a like because at least you're trying. The second option would be you edit the videos yourself. And again, this is time consuming. This is not gonna be something that you can start doing immediately and it works perfectly. I've been doing this for 10 years and it's all I do. So um, it's like you have to get into the process of doing something and it's gonna take time and practice. But if you're willing to put in the time and energy, good, go for it. A couple phone apps that I really like to use are InShot and Mixed Captions. InShot is a great one. You can trim the video, edit, put text on top, put graphics overlay, put your logo, something like that. Um, another good thing with InShot is you can change the sizing of your video. So, or like the shape of it. So if it's wide, if it's widescreen like I am right now, um, and you want to make it into a square or you want to make it uh, horizontal, like taking up the whole phone screen, you can do all that. You can resize the video within InShot. And then mixed captions is another really good one I like to put subtitles on your video because as we know, I think it's like 80% of people watch videos without any sound. Think about it. You're on the bus, you're on the subway, you're walking to work. You don't have headphones. You're just kind of looking down at your phone. You're probably not going to click to play the sound. So if your video is not engaging within the first three seconds, they're definitely scrolling past it. So subtitles can help a lot with that because it gives people another way to consume your content. They can read what's happening in the video. And option three would be outsourcing. I would suggest this to a lot of people. Uh, like I said, same thing with, it's the same thing with buying a lot of equipment. You can buy all this fancy equipment and it might sit in the corner and collect dust. It's the same thing with editing. If you're, you can, you know, download all these programs, but if you're not going to make the time to learn how to do it and how to do it good, um, it doesn't make any sense. So you're not going to get the results that you are looking for. So with outsourcing, everyone's probably heard of Fiverr. Maybe you've used it. Fiverr will let you find a graphic designer, a video producer, a video editor to do anything you need for your project. Something that I've used on both the client side and the producer side is Smartshoot. That's another really good site that will connect you with video um, professionals. Now, getting the best results 
with someone who's producing your videos for you. You're going to need to speak the same language as them. So just like this creative person isn't going to understand mortgages and real estate and the in-depth details there, you also don't understand the creative process. So there could be a gap there. You're going to, you're going to need to take some time to really bridge that gap, get on the same page with speaking the same language and understanding the lingo in both your worlds. A good way to do this is make sure you're providing vivid examples. So if you're hiring someone to produce your videos for you, um, especially if they're not physically in your office and it's like a remote situation, providing examples is key. Show them, things that you've let, that you like. Now it doesn't have to be only in your industry. It could be any video you've seen ever. It could be a commercial on TV, whatever it is that you like, take a screenshot, send them the link and explain to them what exactly it is that you like about that video so that they can try to replicate it and then, you know, make it your own. And that's going to be a good way to make sure you get the results that you're looking for. Another option here is using something like wow me. They will do all of the production, the editing, the posting for you. So this is the option if you are like, yep, I totally understand that, that this is a lot of work and it's a lot of time and energy I have to spend learning how to do something good. I don't want to do any of that. <laughs> if that's how you feel, you just use something like Wow Me. Um, you go out to their studios. You, all you have to do is dress nice, show up with a smile and they're gonna coach you through how to speak properly on camera, make sure you look nice, make sure there's no food in your teeth. Um, they're gonna make you look really, really nice on camera. I've seen people's results and they're really good. Then they're gonna edit all of that video for you and chop it all up so that there's multiple pieces of content for an entire year, 52 weeks of content, <laughs> that's a lot. So then they're going to post it organically on your behalf. They do not do any paid ad spend or anything like that. It, this is all just about getting you exposure as a thought leader in your space, in your industry. So there's a couple options for you. Okay. I want to mention, well, what time is it here? Um, okay. Perfect timing. So you can catch the replay here on YouTube. If you are watching this webinar live, great. Glad to have you. And if you're catching this video, after on YouTube, fantastic. All of the links uh, for the things I talked about are going to be in the description below. So thank you guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, email me with any questions and definitely message me on Facebook and LinkedIn. That's the fastest way to get a response if you have any questions or just want to chat about something. So good luck. And like I said, I hope you guys leave with the confidence to think about all of these things and really develop your own plan of action around video for your business. I can't wait to see. Talk to you soon.